Alicia, we're going to check in with some of our dailywire.com subscribers. If you'd like to get in a question for us here on uh, the Daily Wire backstage, you could head over to dailywire.com slash subscribe. Give us some of your hard-earned money. Uh, we need it. Alicia, what do we have? What are we hearing? Absolutely, we have some great questions in, re, you know, going with the topic of tonight about censorship. Marie wants to know if you guys can explain the difference in layman's terms between platform and publisher. Mm. That's, that's this your, is, and this is actually a bit contentious. Uh, <laughs> there, there are divided legal opinions on Twitter. Pope hat uh, really read me the riot act about how wrong I am. Thing, yeah. uh, at the same time, uh, Senator Ted Cruz still seems to take our view, and he's, you know, smarter than me. Uh, <laughs> When we talk about the distinction between publisher and platform, uh, what we're talking about basically is, are you an open uh, channel in which your content is provided by users? So if you think about the way Facebook works, when you're scrubbing through there, you're not looking for Facebook posts. You're looking for posts from the girl you went to high school or pictures of your neighbor's kid or pictures of somebody's cute dog. Or pictures of the girl you went to high school with. Or pictures <laughs> of the girl you went to high school with, yeah. And um, so, in that sense, they're a platform. They're not executing uh, editorial discretion as to what's published. Uh, we at thedailywire.com, we're a publisher. We're not a platform. Our content isn't user generated. We're not an open forum. We curate the content that we publish. We have a strong editorial uh, voice. Now, I, I actually will compliment Ben here as our editor in chief. We publish lots of people who disagree with Ben. We have people on staff who disagree, whose job is to disagree uh, with Ben. Nevertheless, we do decide where the boundaries are. We do decide what content is fit to publish. As such, as publishers, uh, we're subject to certain legal liabilities. We have liability when we publish a piece. If there's information that's uh, libelous. libelous, for example, mm -hmm. if there are copyright violations, then all of that redounds uh, to our detriment. Um, whereas if Facebook finds itself in similar positions, they are protected. And they're protected because of this Section 230 of the uh, Communications Act. Decency Act. Communications Decency Act, yes. And which was not written for them, but they have been determined by Congress to fit. And, and there's a good reason why they added this provision into mm -hmm. the Communications Decency Act, which is, you remember, I mean, I was just a glint in my father's eye at the time, but in the 90s, the uh, internet was exploding, and these companies that were pushing the internet into this incredible innovation would have been totally hampered from doing that yes. if every image they put up got them dinged for copyright, or every defamatory statement on the internet, I mean, every in a statement. In a comment section. Yeah, in right. a comment section, every statement on the internet comment section is defamatory, so it would have <laughs> shut down the internet. So they put this provision in to let the right. internet explode. It led to these incredible billion dollar platforms that we're all talking about, and now, p part of the issue is, the platforms can clean up their own uh, comment sections fine. They're not applying the rules fairly or transparently. They are dinging right. one group for using the exact same words that another group gets to say on the platform. And that, it seems to me, is clearly the behavior so, of a publisher. Uh, so what's going to have to happen <clears throat> is a clarification by Congress of what this means. Because yes. obviously there is this line. On the one side is the, you can post whatever you want. That's a platform. On the other side is the, we curate our own content. We pay people to, to post and all of this. That's a, that's a publisher there is a place where it starts to shade from one into the other. That is not clearly defined. And so right. what Popath says is there's, that it's clearly defined in the law. I mean, there are independent users who don't work for Facebook who are posting stuff just like there are independent people in our comment sections who are posting stuff. We're not responsible for the stuff that our commenters post, which is basically true. But the question becomes, is there a point at which Facebook's onerous attempts to quash one particular side of the aisle effectively make it a publisher, particularly if they are benefiting from the from the perception that they are a publisher? Or can they just, can they be a platform, but they actually have to, if you change the law, do they have to be transparent about the standard that they are using so that they are not gaining the benefit of being a publisher, uh, of being a platform while simultaneously acting more like a publisher? Right. But so, doesn't this strike you guys as a horrible Faustian bargain, especially for conservatives and libertarians? Like, okay, so let's pretend, let's just say that we all agree they're publishers. We know that they're messing with all of us. Well, now, okay, so we're going to hand the power over to the government to be able to well, yeah, I'm, do I'm, that. I'm, and then, and, well, they, and maybe is, Trump is friendly to some of the ideas we're talking about here. But now let's go. No, you don't but, the, but, 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 but there is an argument to be made 
I, I know we can't trust Elizabeth Warren when she says break up big tech because I know that that is the deal that you were talking about. But there is a, an argument to be made that these are essentially monopolies that can be broken up in order to foster competition. I think that there are things that can be done that can't be done as long as they are so powerful that nobody can well, essentially Well, it, it is certainly true them. that the largest social media platform, Facebook, owns the second largest social media platform, Instagram. Right. And the largest search engine in the world, Google, owns the second largest right. search engine in the world, which is YouTube. Right. So I think that there may be something to this sort of uh, monopoly issue. Although, I don't necessarily think that the government needs to break them up. I think that if they were held to any kind, this is why, with, with Pope Pat's objections notwithstanding, uh, and agreeing that Congress needs to clarify this, if you hold them to a standard of being platforms, most of this is going to cure itself. If you hold them to a standard of being publishers, also most of it will cure itself. You know, some people in Congress want to treat them as utilities. Right. I'm also against that, uh, although am I more against it than what we currently have? Well, I, I'm not sure about that. Right. But if you think about AT&T can't take away your phone because you said something conservative to someone else off. on the... Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. But we are veering pretty close to that. I mean, actually, yeah. right? Yeah, that's like, right. Why yeah, are they yeah. allowing Alex Jones to have a phone? 